All right, Coach. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. Yes, we're going up into the magic, up under the second story. And as we go up, here is the man, the one and only, the Emil Denny's. The man who never ages. He just <laughs> keeps flying pigeons, keeps winning races. Emil, welcome. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Emil, before we start looking at the race birds. Yes. Give the people a little info on you. Yes. A little bit about you, because you're a quite unique man. Yes, well, I started pigeon racing together with my grandfather, Emil Dennis Sr., at the age of seven. So, I must say I have learned a lot from him. Also, at the age of, say, the Dennis family, also my father, Kamil, and my uncle were always involved in pigeon racing and organizing. My grandfather helped to uh, start to found the West, Vlaamse, West Flanderen Long Distance Union in 1938. So my uncle Cyril was president from it in about 1950. So also from the, then we, fly, we were flying in the Gistel Long Distance Club, still very famous. So they were always president or always say helping to organize long distance races. So I, well, I was in then for seven years in Anderlecht, near to Brussels, uh, in the sco at school. So, but all my free time when I came home, I always spent in the pigeon loft. And I must thank my grandfather and father. They gave me a lot of freedom to try to, to make pairs and let me do, let me test, let me try. So it's only by trying that you learn. So, because a lot of other old fanciers don't give the chance to their child or grandchild, but I had a lot of chances. So I could practice a lot also because they were, they, my family was established with all these famous fanciers. I had a chance to visit the famous fanciers at that time, Catrice Brothers, uh, André van Bruane, Oscar de Vriend, Van der Rest, etc. and learn a lot that way. I always say, if you want to be successful in pigeon racing, you must steal with your eyes and your ears when you visit a pigeon loft. You must steal with your eyes and your ears. So if you're listening right now, Emil just gave you the first tip. Yes. Steal with your eyes and your ears. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and uh, was your, has your family always been in the long distance? Always long distance people. And why? Uh, because in the area where we lived, this was Gistel, near to Ostend, uh, long distance was popular. Also, uh, my, uh, my family were traders, so they met a lot of famous pigeon fanciers, but famous pigeon fanciers are mainly long distance fanciers, because the speed, the sprint men are mainly only known locally. Uh, you have, say, you have a national long distance one, but a sprint man is mainly Every club has a, a champion, with all respect for the sprint men, but you say for, even in Belgium from one province to another one, we don't know the sprint men from, from a, but the long distance fanciers we know. Okay. Uh, that's the reason, maybe, and also we were surrounded by long distance men, so they, that pushed them in that direction, I think. Yeah. Right, so you've, your family's always been in the long distance, you enjoy the long distance. Uh, for people to understand, uh, what, what, what's considered long distance? Well, say, uh, at that time long distance started, say, about 600 kilometers. Up, uh, 
up to Barcelona, which is 1,075 about, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that was that's your lo that was your long distance. It's a long distance. Uh, oh, okay, and. Uh, how often were you guys being able to race? How many races in a season in long distance were you? All right, we have we have race every week. We have race every week. Say Limoges is one of the popular uh, liberation places. So there is two times Limoges. Then you have in Belgium we can race long distance every week. I can show the program every week. Say, say I'm, by, my meaning is from first week of June until first week of August, we can race every week. Every week. And still, uh, and still to this day, you're still racing every yeah. week? Yes, I'm still racing every still week. Racing yes, every yes, week. Every, yes. Every week. Every week, and, yes. And what's your, what's your favorite races to play? Well, my goal, my favorite places are the international races. Okay. So, starting with Po International, then we have Aachen International, then we have, of course, Barcelona, the Blue Ribbon Race International. Next week we have St. Vincent International, which is one of my favorite races also. Then, followed by Marseille International, Narbonne International and Perpignan International. So we, we have race every week. And out of those races, I'm sure you've competed in all of them, uh, how many nationals or international wins have you achieved or, or well, very close? Uh, in Po, I did not win, but I was three or four times in top ten, number two, number six, number eight. This I am sure. Um, Aachen was not so, I think the best position was number 12. This is only 800 kilometers, I prefer the 900 and 1000. From Barcelona I only missed number one, so I had number two, number three two times, number four, number five, number six, but I am still trying and I hope maybe one day I will get the number one. Now, again, when you say international, how many birds roughly in these races are you competing against? Because it's uh, uh, easy to say international, but what, yes, what is the bird? Well, uh, in, in Po International, there is about 8,000, 9,000 pigeons uh, competing. In Aachen is now very popular. This is 800 kilometers and there is a race uh, for yearlings and one for old birds. The, the total number in 2021 was over 30,000 pigeons. Wow. Yes. Um, very popular now because they can send the yearlings. Barcelona last year, um, if my memory, I think about 15,000. And these races, is it only into Belgium or international? International, say, international means France, not the whole of France, but there is always a minimum distance. Okay. France, Germany, Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg. So, uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of competition. Yes, a very wide competition. So then followed Saint Vincent, I think there is about 10,000 pigeons. Marseille is usually around 8,000. Narbonne is again yearlings and old birds, total about 15, 17,000. Perpignan is the last race of the year. Very popular, easy half, 15,000 pigeon or so. And all these results that you've talked about, the, the, the ones that you're so close, those are all international. So yes. Everyone. Yes. So guys, this is a world-class flyer here, okay? <laughs> and, and and he's he's still trying to win today. Yeah. I tell you, this guy right here, he's he's 20, you're 21 years old when he's standing here. I see a young, young man still wanting to win, go out there and, and compete. Now, you fly yearlings, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, yes, four-year-olds? Even, I will show you one of my best pigeons, two of my best pigeons are born 2015. <laughs> one has, and <coughs> still on top, I first will show the St. Vincent, he won last year 
I think number 31 National St. Vincent and he already won one time number 20 National St. Vincent and every year I will send him again also <coughs> because one of his children wins a very good position in one loft racing in Costa del Sol last year so uh, he's a good breeder too but he's from a family of good breeders then I have another one born 2015 uh, he now has fl flown Barcelona three times and he is number 11 ash pigeon for th for three years you know okay so f he's flown three years and in three years he's accumulated of that race yes he's the 11th best the best pigeon yes best yeah. pigeon. wow yeah so this is a very pure t pigeon i would say uh, uh, right now <clears throat> in all these years of flying before we look at pigeons how do you select and how do you find these pigeons that can do these, not only racing in your local area the distance, but going out and competing at a high level in the internationals? Well, how do you find them? Well, first by competing. If you send them, you will find them. If you send your pigeons, in the beginning maybe only one or two or a limited number, but then after selecting this, you start breeding from them and you start breeding from their parents, same parents, you will have a higher percentage. But the f how I made my long distance team was a very hardish way. This was in the years 1966, 1967, 1968. We sent all our youngsters that uh, uh, that time to Angoulême. This was 640 kilometers, 400... Uh, Four, 400 and geez, maybe 420 miles? Yes, something like that. So you sent all your young birds? All my young birds to that one time or two times. In a season? In a season as a young bird, okay. born in February, March, raised in August, September. Wow, so... So, young. So, young. Fucking young. So, some, only few survived. We bred from this, sur uh, from this that survived, and from their parents, and made the long distance family for that. Because I always say, I have a, a quick maturing long distance family. And that is probably the reason that I am with the same pigeons so successful in one loft racing. Uh, makes sense. So, so that t how? Okay, now <clears throat> in those years, how old would you have been? Uh, well, uh, twenty years old. You'd have been twenty. So, how did you come up with this idea to breed the young <clears throat> birds and and not breed in in December? You put them together in February. So extra, extra hard. Yeah, but at that time, not too many bred in, in December. It was more the natural way than okay. the old way. Because one of the famous long distance flyers, Charles van der Resp in Ostend, did that. And he said, but he was only also his pupil, Maurice van der Velde, did this system. They say we are only looking for a few pigeons, one or two that can do that. Uh, and breed from this, we are only looking for a topper, a special pigeon, can do that as a young bird. And, and you weren't looking for the young bird to win the race, you to, were looking at the pigeon to come home? Yeah, to win, to win the race, to win the race and to come home. Both. Both, both, and to come home in time. Okay. Uh, well, you couldn't win the race, you had to come home in, in a good time. In a good time. I will tell you one story in 1966, Angoulême. The first Angoulême National was a very easy race, uh, 1,400, 1,500. First drop is a very small hen and she was our number 13 nominated. 13 is Judas in Christian uh, okay. <laughs> so we called her Judaska she won the number 6 national 
first provincial and the cup of the governor because on that race was every year on a race there is the cup of the governor so she won the cup of the governor we also had number 10 I think we had 17 we sent 17 and had 13 prizes but it was an easy race finished on the day so we fi the national racing is 25 percent one to four eh? right so two weeks later we sent these were all youngsters from the first round we also sent the youngsters from the second round to Angoulême and it was a again this is 420 kilometers it was a very difficult race only five pigeon on the day headwind already December so then we started clocking in in the next morning the first arrival was again that small tiny hen Judaske winning number 34 so I think we sent about 30 and that's about 600 kilometers Six, yes 646 kilometers exactly right. so yeah around 420 miles okay. <coughs> we started clocking 8 15 or something like that and we had 11 until 12.30 so we thought by tonight we will have 20 yeah. but at 11.30 it stopped and the next one came one week later yes so it was very clear which ones we had to keep or not to keep and that was that was that so it was very simple so you made it simple on yourself you yeah. tested them pushed them to the, pushed <laughs> yes. them to the limit what came came okay so that was the system and you do you still <coughs> the question today is do you still do that technique well we can no more do that because Angolim is no more allowed at a certain time also Bordeaux was allowed 750 kilometers for young bird wow but now with uh, animals protection we can no more do that they always for especially for young birds make the distances shorter and shorter and shorter so then Angoulême was replaced by La Souterrain 100 kilometer less but now La Souterrain also cancelled to now we have 480 kilometer etc so uh, they are other pigeons they are not the same pigeons so it's kind of uh, it's different now it's different but what I did to select to continue selecting because also there was another reason at a certain time uh, on this 500 kilometer they used cortisone uh. so but I never used cortisone so but this falsified the result so uh, I didn't the others can do what they want I did not want to follow that I don't want say to take the resistance of my pigeons away by giving cortisone so then I said I will select them as a yearling so then I selected my pigeons as a yearling to the final race Narbonne 875 kilometer so you just pushed it up moved it back one season yeah, one, one season yes and it's still working good it's still working good I'm still convinced. You're still convinced. Yes. You're still producing super pigeons. Now, we're going to go look in the, in the breeder loft. I wanted to just say thank you for that little intro. Yeah. That is uh, incredible. That's Emil Denny's. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, we are here with Emil Denny's. We are upstairs in the Widowhood loft. And Emil, do you, you only fly cocks? You fly hens? No, I, f I fly cocks on widowhood and hens on natural system. Okay. For the long distance. So we're going to start with the cocks? We have start with the cocks. Okay. Part of the cocks, I have some cocks down. My Barcelona team, my stars from the Barcelona team are downstairs. Okay. Uh, but this is St. Vincent, etc. I will start with this one. And how, uh, can I ask you, how old is this loft that we're in? Because this is above your house. Uh, yes, this here I started uh, racing here in um, uh, 1990. 1990. Yeah, before I raced in Zulte, first we raced in Gistel, where my pa parents live, they all passed away now. So then we raced in Zulte. And now, since 1990, I raced here. Can you see the ceiling there? And 
as you can see, as we're in here, the upstairs of the house come in through the window. We have a nice hallway. And we are here with Emil Denny. And Emil's known uh, as the, the Dark Army Man. <laughs> They're always dark, eh? So, so before we look at this pigeon, Emil. Yes. The, the setup of the loft. Yes. Yeah. Sections. Boxes. I see you use uh, the wood chips. Yes. What? I like this. Now they're not. That's not sawdust. That's not shavings. It's wood chips. The wood chips, yes. And the wood chips, you leave it in all year. No, we change. Now uh, this widow woodcox have bred one round of youngsters. Okay, one round of youngsters. So they get to have one round. One round. Two babies. One or two babies. Sometimes one, depending what they have. Also the importance. If I think the the hen is good enough. I keep two babies, but sometimes uh, some, the quality is not so. Okay, and uh, you, how long do you leave the uh, the babies with the cock? Do, do the uh, cocks finish it, them? It, the cocks finish, well, I separate them when they, the babies are about 10, 12 days, then the hens go to the aviary and the cocks continue feeding them. Oh. And then, so when they are 20 days, they are weaned. So 20 days they're weaned out. Now, at this time, are the cocks going out and exercising? Yes, we start exercising every morning because very soon, <coughs> now today is a bad day, but the forecast for next week is good, then we will start training them. And training them with the car? Is that with the car, private, private. And how far will you go? Well, first time will be 10 kilometer, second time will be 50 kilometer. Ooh. Maybe <coughs> two times 50 kilometer. And then they go with the club. Next weekend we have one hundred Arras 100 kilometer. Now, when you go with these pigeons to the 100 kilometer for racing, do you clock them or you just? No, 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 I don't clock them. You just let them go? J just for fun, but I have as much fun. I enjoy as much in the training, in the 100, 200, 300, I have as much fun as for long distance. You so, know. so you enjoy, really, you enjoy I it I enjoy uh, sitting there, you know. Uh, oh, wait, here's the, here's the chair. <laughs> yes, I sit there. So you sit here in the chair. Yes, and watch them, who is coming in first, second, uh, you know. Uh, okay, now, <clears throat> these cocks here, you're going to fly them widowhood. At what point do you start showing them the hands? How does this work? Uh, well, the hands, I only show when they come back home not before they go I don't as I am a long distance flyer I don't want to make them too excited okay so uh, even on the short races no, they only get hands on, on return on, yes on return but this means they learn it also gradually okay and when they when they come home how long will they have the hands uh, about one hour in the beginning okay and they can go in the box with them, or do you lock them in? Uh, well, or free uh, they, range? It, no, well, if the loft, if they are all in, I open, they can fly around. But when they come home, it's box by box, individual. So you put them in box by box? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything special you use, medications? Well, I will give them before we start. Hello, yeah, yeah. Uh, before they start. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we give them a cure, so for um, respiratory. Yes. So, so uh, you give them a respiratory treatment. The treatment, yes. Anything uh, else? Uh, uh, or also, we give them by uh, when racing, we give them um, b before they go. A yellow drop, you know, the yellow, yellow drops. drops. Yes, you yes. give it to them before they go to the race. Yes, in the, in the nose. Each nostril, yeah. okay. And uh, we are here with the meal Denny's. They go in every nose, we put one. Okay, hold on. Ryan Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. Yes, we are here with the meal Denny's. We're looking at the Widowhood Cocks. Uh, and you say you give them the yellow drops. Yes. Now, why yellow drops? What's your reasoning on this? I mean? uh, well, because yellow drops is very simple. You can give some products in the water for anti-trichomoniase, for cancer. 
but uh, you never know how much they drink or if they drink. Also, they don't like if some medicine or vitamin is in the drinking, they don't like to drink. They'll drink less. Uh, but if you put in the nose, then you are sure they have it. They are, they are clean. So you do that the day of basketing? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, as you basket? I take them and put two. Done. Yeah. In the basket they go. Now these cocks here, uh, normally, uh, how many days do they spend in a basket when they go to the races? Well, in the beginning, only one night. Okay. Uh, then after, so I think three, four times, only one night. Then after, for the national and international, for the international races, we basket on the Monday, liberation on the Friday. So that means they're in the basket five days. Four, well, four, oh, four and a half. Four and a half, yeah. yeah. Four and a half days, uh, they're in the basket. And, and uh, do you think it makes it harder on the pigeons, being in the baskets this long? Yes, but these are, they get experience to that, eh? Also, there are not too many pigeons in a basket for international racing. Only 16 cocks or 18 hens. So, and all these pigeons are in condition, this does no harm to them. They just rest? Yeah, just rest. Okay, so you basket them, you give them the yellow drops. When they come home from these races? Uh, we give them, yellow, well, we give them drinking um, with, um, I give them, what? Eh? Probac 1000. Okay. From Brookamp, eh? Okay, yes. I give them Brookamp uh, 1000 when, 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 for drinking, and they get the first night sport mixture, good food. Good food. That, so they recover very fast. So they get carbs, they get fats, they yes. get everything. Yeah, yeah. You give them everything. Okay? Everything, yes. So right. the idea is to let them recover as soon as possible. Build them back up quick. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And all these are the, these sections are all the same. Well, this this are all two year olds, so means born 2020. So these are all two year olds. So I intend to send them to final race Narbona International. And that is how many kilometers? 875. And, norm and normally with these cocks here, uh, I don't know, how many are in here? Would you say 20? 20, yes. How many of them will do you feel will compete the season to the level that you want? Uh, maybe 10 or 12. And Half of them. Half. How, how do you uh, select which ones stay? By, by, by the basket. Uh, so not just coming home? No, 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 no. They no. have to get the result that you're looking for? The res result are the condition they, they are, I am looking for. Okay. So, and then the idea is to send them to Barcelona in 2023. The survivals, I mean, eh? Yes. Because this here, number three, loft. The third section, yeah. The third section. So these are ready to go to Barcelona. So nine are left. Nine are left. So they have done uh, Narbonne with success. Man, I know why they call you the Dark Army. <laughs> now, question, do you, and I'm looking, do you feed them in the boxes? Yes, individually. Every day? Every day. Okay, and I see here there's some, to show the people, there's some, it looks like barley. It is barley. Now, say, now they finished the the breeding. Mm -hmm. So, when once the youngster is away, we give them depurative. A depurative mix. Mix, yes. So, but the, of course they leave the bar the, the barley. Eh? They don't like to eat the barley. Eh? So you give them the, the, the pure, like pure. The, the pure mix. And how long are you going to keep them on this the pure? Well, until I start training. Uh, when I when I start training, then I will have give them half half. Okay. So half the mix is the pure, yes. half is, is the sport mix, yes, yes. and every day you feed them in the box, you feed them once a day? Once a day. And you leave the food with them? Yeah, we leave the food with them. When do you take the food away? Well, once a week we clean up, say the old food or the left food, and then we start again, eh? 
Right. So the, the pot stays full. Stays full. Or half full. Quarter full. You, you keep topping it up. Yes, yes. Keep topping it up. Yeah. And pigeons like this, when they go out to exercise, you exercise them uh, around the loft once a day? Once a day. Now, no once a day, but later from on, uh, May 20, then twice a day. Okay, so does each section go out differently? No, no, all together. So all these yeah. cocks go out together? Yes, yes. Uh, you let them out in the morning the same time? Same time, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. And 6 o'clock at night. Okay, so when they when they go out here, do you flag them or do you let them do what they well, want? Well, say, I don't have to flag them. They fly very easy. Very easy. Be because they are already in condition. They fly very easy. Maybe I flag them at the end a little bit, but for one hour it's no problem. And that's what you want to see? Yes. You don't want to see two hours? No, no need, no need. One hour enough. So, six in the morning, you let all the cocks out. Yeah. They go for their fly. Yes. Uh, seven seven o'clock they come in. Okay, now what happens if you get a bird that lands early? He wants to play on the roof. Well, yes, well, we throw something or something. Uh, so. keep him up. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. you got to stay up. Yes, yes. So we must stay up. Otherwise, if one drops early, the other ones drop with, with him together. Now, if you see a pigeon that keeps dropping early, the same check white flight same guy well you better kill him <laughs> <laughs> Emil Danny's hey I'm, I'm, I, these are things that people ask yes what do I do yeah right take him away take him away it, because it now you must understand a widowhood system is a team if you have one or two disturbing the team discipline you must take him away right is that including even being in the loft <coughs> Problem in the loft. Yeah, but in the loft you cannot see. We give them a chance until we start. Okay, so discipline is key. If the bird lands early, keep landing. A couple times he's gone. He's gone. You know, uh, disturbing the, t the discipline, this is no, uh, no good. No good. So, <clears throat> you loft fly every day at 6 in the morning, then you loft fly every day at 6 in the evening. Is there a reason why you let them out at 6 in the evening? That's, for some people would say, oh, that's very late. Yeah, but in, in here it is light until 10 o'clock, eh? Ah. 10, 10.30, eh? In Europa we have light in the summer, eh? Okay. So it's not late, I find, not late. Just a little cooler? A little cooler because in the summertime, if you let them out for, it's still very hot uh, or can be very hot. Uh. Uh, also, it's a question if they are used to it. It's it's okay here now. Uh, right. And these cocks will not see the hens at all. You never show them. During only the week, they're... only when they come home. Only when they but, come home. But in the beginning, from the trainings, they, they come home every week, so they see the hen every week, eh? Yes. Uh, baths. How often do you bathe them? Uh, when it is raining, when... when I, uh, you let them out? Yeah, let them out. That, so you don't give them a bath pan? Well, uh, no, I have no bath pan here. Okay. Interesting. So that's the system of these cocks. Yes. And uh, by the end, uh, from a young pigeon, uh, from a young bird to a, uh, if you breed, how many young birds you breed? For myself, 200. 200. Okay. Ah, ah. And you race roughly what? Three or four years, roughly. Y yes. Yeah. Them. How many will you have left of 200? Oh, only a few. Only a few. Only a few. Only if I normally I try to raise them until they are six year, five years old. Five years old. <coughs> These two hundred, 2015 are exceptions, you know. Uh, right. Uh, I try to raise them until five years old. So basically, if you breed 200 youngsters, let's say in the year of 2020. Yes. And by the year 2025, out of those 200, what do you roughly expect to have left? Five cocks and five hens. And out of those five cocks and five hens, do they normally? Normally turn out to produce super pigeons? Yes. They because they have been consistent also. I only keep the consistent pigeons. One one time a, a, a top price, then no more and no need. I keep the consistent pigeons. Consistent. Yes. And and that's what you see. Two hundred pigeons over five years. You're going to have five cocks and five hens, maybe. 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 Not for sure. Not for sure. And those ones though should be able to continue to produce you yeah, yes. high-level pigeons. Yes, yes. And this is how you select. This yes. over 
Uh, 50 years. 50 years? <laughs> yes. So yes. I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. And have, in your time, have you ever changed things, done ma major changes? Well, we, I always try. If I hear something, I try, you know, but the main... I would say these ideas, I, I no need to change, you know. Uh, it works. It works. But I also breed from a son or a brother of a star, you know. Uh, I also... Uh, you, you, you don't mind doing that as well? No, 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 no. Uh, you have more chance if you breed from a family. Only one pigeon can be right, can be wrong. Because it is maybe the matched hen, it is maybe not the matched hen. But if you make around the same a star, uh, four or five pigeons, you have more chance. More chance. More chance. You will breed from another one. Maybe you don't expect, but you will breed from another one. So if you have a cock out of here that's made it five years. Yes. And he's got maybe brothers or sisters and younger years. Yes. That are coming up. Yes. You will. You may stop some of them. Yes. To say, hey, the, the, the blood, it, it's in this little group. Yes. Keep them going. Yes. Breed around them and find another good one. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so you're, you're, you're... Or maybe, say, one cock with a daughter from another one. Right. Not raised, you know. Uh, yes. Okay, so so I get it. Now, do uh, you believe in Einstein? No. No. Only in the basket. The basket is it. So there you have... <laughs> Once I asked a question to Piet de Weert. Okay. So I said, uh, who is the best now? He says, you look at the list. At the result. Right. So there's no other comment. That's it. No Einstein, no nothing. No other comment. You look at the list, he said. Hey, on that note, Emil, thank you for showing us your uh, widowhood cocks. We really, really appreciate it. And best of luck this season as well. Yes. Thank we, you. We'll try. Hey, guys. No, for... for, for We're outside his home. It's a beautiful Belgian weather day. <laughs> That's where we were. We're up there. Above the home. More and more loss. Not shy of loss. We're gonna go see his Barcelona team. Well, you can maybe, you can take him from here. Yep. Very easy to see, it's this one. This is the 777. The cock. The cock, the dark checker white flight, eh? Wow. So... What about this cock? He is now number five, national ash pigeon, Barcelona, three years. Three years. So th three years, he's, he's gone to Barcelona three times. Yes, yes, yes. And he's the number uh, five, five, five pigeon. National ash pigeon. That's incredible. And you're you're gonna play him again this year? Yes, yes, uh, I hope. Maybe number one. Number one? I hope. I... And have you won that before? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, with the T I have won that before, eh? So these guys here they're with the hens, they're having what, young now? No, they they are paired up March the first. They have now just Youngsters to be, some are ringed, the others must be ringed. So these birds here, this Barcelona team, you're only interested in them for one race? For one race, Barcelona. And uh, it's it's just these cocks? Yes. And you will fly them, how will you fly them the, the week of Barcelona? How, how do you want to have them set up? Well, but they will only fly, after this, finishing this youngster, they will be put on widowhood, eh? Right, they're gonna be put on widowhood as well. So the same system? Same system as upstairs. Only the pigeons up are paired up uh, January 20, and these are paired up March 1st. Okay, and uh, have you ever tried flying the cocks to babies? No, 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 no. No, no you never do this. And why is that? Well, uh, I fly the hens on babies. Why not the cocks? I, I tried one or two times with cocks on nest, but not successful. With the hands, I can do better.
So why do you think that is? The cocks on the nest, they're not the same. What's your thought? Well, yes, I, I, can't, I don't know the reason. Some are successful, but I, <laughs> I, I was not successful. So this is the Barcelona team right here. Yeah, this is a Barcelona, this is a Barcelona, this is a Barcelona. There are all Barcelonas here, seven in. And how long have these cocks been in this loft? Since 2016. This is an interesting thing. So they started here with, we started here with a full loft, full loft. and that's loft left. Okay. <laughs> so even as uh, young pigeons they were in here? Yes, yes, yes. Young pigeons are in here, and how many, in this loft, how many young pigeons would you have had? Well, I had uh, maybe 20. 20. And you slowly work them, work them, yeah. and they never leave this loft. You yeah. always fly them to this loft. This loft. What's the reason behind that? Well, uh, it, it is better not to move them, but you cannot always do that. Because I ha you will see I have lofts where there is only three. Yeah. And, and that's, that, that's interesting to see. So you, what you like to do is start pigeons in one section yes. and leave them. I leave them. And that's maybe one of the reasons why you have so many lofts, because you have uh, of course. Seasons, seasons. I will show you, uh, say, my other two Barcelona lofts. And here we are, we are with Emil Denise. And this is what we talk about. You see the lofts? Lofts, lofts, lofts. I will show you the second Barcelona loft and the third Barcelona loft. We are with Emil Denise here in Belgium. Each loft, I think, is going to look identical inside. Got pigeons out flying today. One of my favorite breeders, Emil Denise. This again. So now, within these. You see how many? <laughs> yeah, there, there's almost no pigeons. Here. Yeah, well, so this one is so very inbred T. He is also 2015. He is now number 11 ass pigeon. Number 11 ace pigeon. Yeah, three years. And you can tell all these pigeons are the same, eh? Yeah, but identical. Yeah. <laughs> they got the same look so to them. Here were in 2020. Three of them were in top 100 national. This one, this one, this one. Yeah, beautiful. And these, okay, so these cocks here you let out. Do you let them out with the other cocks all along? Yes, 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 yes. Everyone so. goes out together and they all go, they're, they're used to their lofts. And yeah, they their oh, home. yes, yes, yes. I say the widowed cocks from upstairs and downstairs all train together. Hey, you know, there's only one good thing for you. What? You have electronic clock. Yes, of course. You have a hard time, eh, on race day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, very simple setup. You, you have the wood chips on the floor. Yes, but they are changed now. When the breeding is finished, they are changed. For racing, we put new one, eh, fresh one. Fresh one, in, and that'll stay in all season? Yeah, all season, yeah. And once the season starts, we no more change the loft. Uh, and that is a beautiful hen. Holy yeah, jeez. Yeah. Look at her, eh? Super class. You see the pigeons here. These are the Barcelona lofts. Um, and that's it with the cock. So they all fly the same system. They all get the yellow drops. Yes, they, they, yes, yes, yes. They get the same sport mix. Yes. They're yes. on the same system. Wow. There you have it, Emil Dennis. You see now the Barcelona loft, so you understand. I have one more loft. You There's want, only three there. Three? You want to? Sh Let's see that. Let's yeah. end on a high note, shall we? <laughs> Oh, now here, now this is what, your mix? Yes, this is the depurative. So that's the depurative mix that yes. uses. And we just show you here. That. Yes, yes. Yeah. There it is. So these cocks are on this right now, pretty, oh well, no. No, They're not yet, eh? they, they are on breeding mix. Next door is breeding mix. Okay, and this But then we change on sport mix. This is the breeding mix? Yes, because they have youngster now, they, so they get this. They get this breeding mix. They get to go out. Do the hens go out with them or no? Yes, yes, yes. When you let them out for a fly? No. When they no. When, as soon as long as they are paired up, they all fly together. 
As long as they're paired up, they fly together. Uh, yeah, but in a few days, I will separate the hands, eh? So that? Then the hands go in the aviary, only get the purative. So there you go. There, there you have the, the pure mix. So when he separates the hens away, he moves the babies away. Yeah. These cocks will go on this mix, lightens them up. As we look to the loft. For the three pigeons. For the three pigeons. <laughs> Whole loft for three pigeons. This is dedication. Well, there's Elite Pigeon Auctions here with Emil Denny. But here in this loft there are three, but only one goes, this one. This is the Kleine, the small Barcelona. He was my first pigeon last year, he is number uh, nine as pigeon. Nine ace pigeon. Yeah. And the hens, they always have the same hens. Yes, they have the so same hens. So you have hen. to remember to put the hens in the right sections? Yeah, but they, this have white color. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you marker everything up so you know where they go. This no problem. Very simple. But he's, he only goes, the other one has been two times, but was not good enough. This one has not been, but I put three cocks inside. If two, they are always fighting. Yes. So I put three. You put three and it, it gives a little loft uh, chemistry. Yes, uh, yes. A feel in the loft. You know, uh, if I put three, they're fighting. So if I put uh, two, if I, they're fighting. So, but if I put three, then they have balance. Well, there you have it. You've seen Emil Denny's, his Barcelona. Kleine Barcelona. This is my favorite also. This is his favorite also. Emil, thank you for taking the time to show us this. I really appreciate it. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. I am here with Emil Denny's. We looked at the cockbirds and how he flies them. We've seen his Barcelona teams. Now we are in a loft that is designed for, for what? Hens? Hens. Only natural hens. Natural hens. And how are these hens flown? Well, uh, now I, they are paired up April the 1st. When they have let, then I start the training. Eh? And also they go like the cocks, 100, 200, but mainly only one night basket. For hens. For hens. Then at the end of May, I try to put them every week if they are not laying. If they have to lay, then we don't put them. Uh, but otherwise we put them every week. And then we put them the last week of May to the national race of Bourges. Then they are sitting at the end, but we don't let them rear a youngster. You just let them sit the eggs? Sit them the eggs, yes. Okay, and... <clears throat> These hens, how far will they go? Uh, do you take them to Barcelona? Well, the yearlings go to Narbona. Okay. The two-year-olds go to Perpignan. Okay. And the three-year-olds and older go to Barcelona. And have you found in the years what does better at Barcelona? Hens, cocks. For now, well, I have had good hens, but say the last period, the cocks are best. But in 2018, I won national from Barcelona with hens, number three, number 23, number 69. Also, I only had hens then, so I also did well. And uh, they're always paired to the cocks. Always paired to the cocks, but the cocks don't go. The cocks stay in? Stay in. They don't loft fly? We loft fly, they fly loft, but they don't go on the race, I mean. So they're only here for motivation? For motivation, yes. And keep the system going on the eggs? Yes, yes, yes. And that's it. Any special medications, anything you give? Same, same like upstairs. Same eh? like upstairs. So when you ship them, they get the yellow drops in the nose. Yes. They come home with the, the Proba Black. Okay. Pro -back, pro -back Pro -back 1000. Pro -back 1000 when they come home. Uh, all the feed they want? They, they get half, half. Half, half. Half depurative, half breeding mission. Okay. And uh, they go out twice a day? One, they only go out once a day when the hens are from the nest. This means maybe in the afternoon, two o'clock. 
You let them all out, all the, all the hens go out when the cocks are After fly, uh, the, the cocks are sitting on the eggs, eh? And how do you find these hens fly when you let them out normally? Very good. Better than the cocks. Better than the cocks. Easy going. Easy going. And uh, road training? Road training also, when, say, road training, the last 10 days before they go to the race. Okay. For the last five, six days, depending on the weather also. Eh? You'll take them out, and normally what, 40, 50 kilometers? 50 kilometers. Okay, so you take them 50 kilometers, they all come back to the cocks and, yes. and the eggs and, and whatever they're sitting on, and that's it. That's it. And they still get loft flown that day? No, 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 no. So if you take them in the car, you don't loft fly? No, no, no. So it's simple. Simple, simple, simple. Simple. And you found still that your cocks do perform a little better than the hens? Yes, but I, I especially put the hens also in order to find the good breeding hens. The best racing hens are the good breeding uh, hens. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that. So the hens that do the distance at the good times, they normally are... Well, say when you compare with a hen with no record, the hens with good record will breed a higher percentage of good pigeons than the ones without records. And guys, remember, he's been doing this since he was seven years old. So yeah. You kept a lot of notes, eh? Yes, yes. A lot of notes. Yeah. So that's the system, uh, Emil Benny's with the hens. And how many years will you fly the hens? All, uh, until uh, four years old. Until four years old. Not so long, uh, one year less than the cocks. One year less than the cocks. Okay, well there you have it. The hens, Emil Denny's, thank you. Hey guys, I am here with Emil Denny's. Yes, and we're in, I would say this is a very small little trophy room. If he had to have trophies out, he would have uh, three times this room full, from top to bottom, from left to right. You see them all here. But we're gonna talk something about modern day winning today, eh? What, what year are we in, Emil? 2022 now. 22? Yes, yes. So winning, and, and you've been winning for how many years? About more than 50 years. More than 50 years? Some of your best achievements in Barcelona. Yeah. What have some of your best ones been? Well, uh, second, number two, eh? Yeah. And number two, two times number two. Uh, number three, two times. Number four, number five. Uh, and, and people could, Number six. People could say, oh, that was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But wait a minute. In your hand, you have something. It's very nice. It's shiny. It goes on the wall. What is this? Well, I got this trophy in memory of my performance in 2020. Because from Barcelona 2020, it was a very difficult race. But we get special prizes for first, second, third, fourth, fifth nominated. So I was first champion, loft champion international, Barcelona 2020 with one, two, and three. You see it right there. Read it, guys. First international 2020 team, first, second, and third. Now this is nominated. Yes. So no. this means nominated. Explain. If you send 30 pigeons, yes, race. We, we nominate our pigeons. This one, say 777, was my first nominated. Ringo 306 was the second nominated. So we give them an order when we basket. So they arrived in this order. Clocking order. Clocking order, you know. So I was first international, Barcelona, one, two, three, first national, one, two, three, first national, one, two, three, four. It's very, you know, it's very hard to get them to come home. Yes. That's yes. hard, eh? You know it's even harder to be able to pick yes. how they're going to come home. So these two here uh, in Barcelona, I only pull in the club. I don't pull national, international, only to support the club. These two won all the highest pools in 2020, also in 2021. Wow, that's all I have to say. You see it? Now, a question. How do you pick pigeons? What tells you to pick a pigeon? What well, by, by prior performance and then by actual condition. So you handle the pigeons, you look at the pigeons, Yes. you have a feeling. Yes. You can't really explain it. 
No, I cannot explain it. You get a good feeling. Yes, you have. You, you must know your pigeon. Uh, also, how well number three. So there are three things: the prior racing from Barcelona, the prior race to Barcelona, and then the condition of the on the basketing day. Right. So you're looking at multiple things yes. to build up to it, yeah. and then you make your pick. And yeah. it must be super exciting when you clock them in the order you pick. Yes, yes. That's a different win. Yes, yes. I mean, you might not win Barcelona, but yeah. to do it in that order. Yes, of course, of course. It's very, very hard. On average, every year when you fly Barcelona or participate at Barcelona, how many pigeons will you send? Well, I think I sent... In 2020, I think I sent 36. In 2021, I think 24 or something like that. So you're not picking from three or four pigeons. You're picking no. out of a group. Oh, yes, yes. And, and you know, we look here, and I see in the, in the photo, I see those beautiful wings. Those golden, the golden wings. wings, yes. And could you explain those? Yes. If you don't mind? No, I don't mind. So, you got a lot of killer trophies there. Well, we should talk about some of them because these are all mega achievements. And you so, see all the hardware. So, this is the Golden Wing Barcelona. Mm -hmm. This is all Belgian fanciers with first Mark Pigeon. So, first nominated. First nominated. So, to win this trophy, you must be the first of the first. <laughs> first nominated and first home. Yes. And is one of those given away every year? This is given away every year. I think it started in 1978. This is the Golden Wing Barcelona. Right. I've seen the original one, the first one. I think it was won by the Normans. Yes. Right. And you, I noticed you have two of them. Yes. It's, uh, I, two, I have two golden and two silver. Two gold, two silver. Yeah. And is it true that you have the most? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and you win this? In 1982 with the T. With the T. Yes. Now, the T, I know a lot of people always talk about this pigeon. He's yes. a very special pigeon. Was he only good as a racer? Or a, a breeder? fantastic breeder. A breeder. Because he's blue. I talk to you about this one from 2015. This is a real T pigeon, direct line. Same. Same. And uh, the T, how many times did he participate at Barcelona? Five times. Five times. Yeah. And when he was done competing after five years, yes. what was his overall ranking? Well, I can show you the rankings. Uh, <laughs> so he was, he was the primus inter pares, the best pigeon uh, over five years. Eh? Best pigeon over five years. Yes, yes. In international. Yes. The best. So the best. We, we don't even have to see it. Seeing is believing. Yes. So this was in 1986 by his son called Playboy. So, so you, you were right. He did produce a good one. <laughs> because I tell a, I tell a story. Ah. <coughs> I started breeding from him and my level went up. So the I cancelled the other pigeons, because you always want to be at the top level. But at a certain moment, I only had T pigeons, I became too close. And my performance went down again, because too much inbreeding. So you needed, you needed to boost it back up. Then I brought in new pigeons from Couteau and Van Bruane, and then again. Again up. And I, I see here in this trophy room, and we talked before, you would have too many trophies, but what are some of these trophies around here? Well, what else are you proud of besides those two golden wings? Well, this is first Euro. Well, oh, you two. can leave it there. I'm going to show it. Yes, this is first Europa champion in 1996. And how do you win this? By long distance on international racing. So that's a, that's a that's a What's big one? achievement. I only keep the very best here, so. As you know, I won the Princess Cup in Thailand three times. 2006, this is the, these are the Princess Cups. Oh yeah, you see them. The Princess Cups. Wow. This was from, in 2006, 580 kilometers. This was a direct daughter of the Black Boy pair. The famous Black Boy pair. So this... <laughs> Same with this one. This as well. one is 2011. 
So this was 2000, this one, 2000, uh, upstairs there, 2018. So this is, are the cups, first ash pigeon, ash pigeon Chiang Mai, 2017. So this pigeon that won this yes. is the, uh, was the grandfather of the first ash pigeon in Pattaya in 2019. Winning today again, eh? Yeah. Still winning? Yes. Still winning. And so this was the first prize in 2000. I won the first prize and I won the first ash pigeon, but with two different pigeons. So in 2017, I won the, uh, the final, you yeah, see. Yeah, the final, that's right. And, and the I won final, the ace pigeon. And, and ace pigeon also. Wow. The, so so the constantly winning. Yes, so <laughs> all, all winning. And you see this all is, the This is from 2021. <laughs> Still so winning. all the best cups I sent to Mike Diamond in, in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that this is an interesting, uh, that's an interesting story. Not about giving the trophies away, but how good did you do uh, that race? All the all your birds sold to one guy in the Philippines. Yeah, but yeah, he bought them by auction. In, in, and well, what, yeah. race, what race was that in? Well, the race from Thailand Pamok, 480 kilometer, and the others were in Pattaya, one loft race. Eh? And you had top, top results? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, with Pamok, I started with number eight. So, and, suck, and he was second ash pigeon. And they sold, and the guy in the bought, Philippines bought them all. I also had number 23. Question for you. In, the, in your time of breeding, uh, racing, selling, all over the world, uh, where have your pigeons gone and won? Everywhere, know? everywhere. I can show you here. Just in China, I talked to you about the Pioneer Club in China. The Pioneer Club in China, your birds have won in Taiwan, your birds win in the Philippines. They win in Spain, they win everywhere. We are with Emil Denny's, and you see the hardware proves it. Guys, you don't get this uh, for coming last. These aren't participation awards. These are hardcore wins. Barcelona superstar, international superstar, long distance machine, Emil Denis. And being in this room here, you, you know you're where the results are. And you see the photos on the wall. More and well, more. So I, uh, I will show here. So you see so, all the pigeons. Well, in a minute, so. This is the first prize in, uh, in 2018 in the final race, 505 kilometers in the Black Sea One Loft race. <laughs> Black Sea? Yes, what, in Romania. Is that Romania. Right? So, the, so this is... This is <laughs> the pigeons win everywhere. So this, the last, in the last One Loft race season, I won number two. This is Costa de la Luz, Spania, number two, and number four, Ash Pigeon. In a minute, I will include two brother and sister of this one. Oh. There were three pigeons together. The first pigeon was also my pigeon, belonged to Wim Kerkhover, my loft manager. Okay. So, uh, and, and I want to ask you one question. We're looking here when I come in, and I see this beautiful, beautiful, Right here. Yes, this is now the. Well, it. No need to give comment. Read it. Of course, I will include one cent from this pair. This yes. This is nearly finished, but I will include one cent. You are going to have an opportunity. Take a look. You want to know how much he believes in the pair, how good the pair is. Take a look. He's got it in the middle of the room. When you come in, it tells you, it smacks you right in the face. I'm a super champion. I've been winning since I was seven years old. And if I wasn't winning, I was trying to win, <laughs> to learn to win. And you look at it here. This is why Feathers Elite Pigeon Options is here with Emil Denny's. Man, I get goosebumps when I come here. Uh, you're a true gentleman, Emil. You're a true winner, a champion, a hell of a nice guy. You've got great pigeons. And I have another question I'm going to ask you. 
How did you get the name the Dark Army? Well, because uh, this is very simple. In the beginning we had Catrice Pigeon and Van Bruana. They were mainly blues. But in 1965, in September 1965, we bought the old Remy Stickle boat, number 744, from 1954. He was 11 years old and we immediately had youngsters from him and this dark color gave to the tea uh, and gave to many champions. It was a super breeder from right from the beginning and he lived until 20 years old, the Remy. And this dark color is still dominant in my pigeon. I wanted to ask you that because we've done the whole tour and in every section it's the same. Yeah. It's the dark. Yes, it's yes. It's the dark. I go to the shows of Fugari or every time I see you with a booth, I see the dark army. The dark army and it's there. And uh, I guess you came up with the name? Or did it just, how did you? Did well, give my it to son you? came up with the name. <laughs> Excellent. And you see it here again. Take a look. This is here from, so I was first FCI world champion in 2007 and 2008. Yeah, you know, we, we, we look at This all is here, the famous black boy pair. The basic pair for one loft racing. So, from this pair is the first Princess Cup winner. The first in Catalonia, Spain and many. This hen is still a daughter of that pair. This hen is from that pair? Yes. And my other question, uh, Emil, the, these pigeons, why do they do so well in one loft racing? Because one loft racing, and, and you know, before we ask, get to that question, let me go back. We didn't look at young birds, and, and there's a reason why. You breed 200 youngsters a season for yourself to play. Yes. What do you do with those young pigeons? Well, I, these young pigeons, I train them maybe seven, eight times, 200, then finally 300 kilometers. So you, you train them, uh, so you, okay, so they go out every day, they loft fly. Yes. How well, long? Free, free fly. Free, open hole. Open hole. Open, all day? No, no, I let them out and then close down again. Oh, so they, yeah. they, they, they can stay out for how long? Um, Maybe one hour or something like that, or two hours, depending. In the beginning they don't fly, but after a certain time they start flying. Yes. Flying very far. Uh, so you let them out, you let them do what they want. Once they start flying good, you let them go out and then get them in. Get, whistle them in, feed them, and then uh, next day again. And next day again. Now, uh, when they're flying real good, ranging good, they're a couple months old, you say you start to train them with the car. With the car, yes. How many times? Not too many times, uh, about three, four times. Three, four times, how far? Uh, until 50 kilometers, this is the border. One, one spot? No, no, we start 10 kilometers, right. say 10, 10, and then maybe two or three times 50. So 10, 10, three times 50, and then that's it? With the, with the club is 110 at a week, every 100, 200 every week. And then they go with the club? Yes, yeah. And when you take them with the club, you put the clock on? No, no clock on. Just take them and let them yeah, go? Yeah. Yes, you yes. don't even look at how they come. They no, they no. Come For young birds, I don't look. And, and you For old that? birds, I do. So young birds, you don't look, uh, and you'll take them out to what, 300 kilometers? 300 kilometers. That's it? That's it, yeah. And then you park them? Yes. Yeah. No more? No more. To finish. Okay. So, so that's what you do with young pigeons? Yes. Now, when you look at that, and then we say, well, you're Emil Denny's, and you've won all these one-off races with young pigeons. How do your pigeons do so well in one-off racing? Because one-off racing isn't old pigeons, it's young pigeons. Yes, but uh, say they are the same pigeons, but the first round I sent to one-off racing. Okay. And uh, third round, second or third round I sent to, I keep for myself. You keep for yourself. They are the same pigeons. They are the same pigeons, but I'm saying, isn't it amazing? You don't concentrate with young pigeons. Yes. And your young pigeons are winning these races. Yes, but it is also, well, I'm 75 years old. It's, it's, I, after, because while I am doing this international long distance races, I have no power and no time 
to do to take care of my youngsters properly because uh, young bird racing is a special game uh, you must breed already in December you must darken them you must this and that I have no time for that so yours are just natural just giving them some experience yes some experience I let them grow out for the international races but obviously the pigeons the family has such good quality that when you send them to these one-off races, quality comes to the top. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what you see. I mean, I'm sure if you decide to start flying young bird racing, you would do very, very well. Yes, I think so. I think and, so. And always in your life, you've never been a big fan of young bird racing. Well, I did when I was young, when I was 20 years old. I, I then. I wanted to raise everything. I wanted to know what quality I had very quickly, you know. But now, I, I well, I can't do it by the one. At that time, one loft racing did not exist. Yes. But so, you're in it now. Yes, yes. And and what do you think overall of the one loft racing? Well, I am enjoy it. It's part of the future of the pigeon sport, and I am enjoying it very much. And he gets very good results all over the world. All over the world. You see Thailand. In China, I have been two times the champion also. 10,000 pigeons by pigeon. Because I was looking at a photo of one of my pigeons. Uh, in, in the Pioneer Club. Yes. Two pigeons in the Pioneer Club. And the Pioneer Club is in China. That's, is that the biggest club in China, Emil? The biggest money club. Biggest money club. And money, what type of money are they playing for there? I, well, uh, one million RMB is now about 125,000 euro. Is only a, 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 a small price. For a, for a champion, you know? For a champion, yes. And here we are, Emil Denis. He looks here for the Pioneer Club. One of his favorite things, he says, is when he gets up every day, he can go put the computer on and all the big races in the world. He has pigeons competing. And he finds a way to get to the top. So these are my cups from Thailand that first I got together with my son Frank in Fugari after I sent them to the buyer, Mike Diamond in the Philippines. Yeah. Hey, he gets the wins. He loves the one loft racing. What more can I say? You're sitting here with a legend. Emil, I want to say thank you very much for uh, giving us the small tour, showing us the trophies, showing us the pigeons, showing us your system, system that he's used for over 50 years. He's always tweaking it, adapting it. You've seen the feed. So this is a thank you from a Chinese fencer. You can read it yourself, it's in English. Well, I'm gonna zoom in on it so they can see it. And you guys, you read that, take it in. There's a thank you. You know why they say thank you? He, this one won two million with that pigeon which is 250,000 euros. 250,000 euros. So two million. It's a nice thank you, isn't it? Yes, yes. And let me ask you, when people win with your pigeons and you hear about it, what does it do for you? Oh, I'm very happy about it because this is a very good customer to me, a uh, very loyal customer. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm very happy about it, you know. Uh, it's as good as you winning it, isn't it? Yes, yes, same, same, same for me. And guys, this is the type of guy Emil Denny's is. He wants to see you succeed. This is why when you see birds from him in auction, they get the results. He's put the work in. Over 50 solid years, well over that. And your family is celebrating pigeons how many years now? 100 years. It was nine, started 1920. So last year or the two years before was 100 years. 100 years. Emil Dennis, again, I see him at the show. So this is the first ash pigeon in Pioneer Club in Tianjin. Super, eh? Your pigeons? Winning today? <laughs> Yeah. Winning today? Yes, well, last season, eh? Last season. 2021 season, eh? The question I have for you, Emil, will your pigeons keep on winning? Well, I think so. This, I am, no, I don't think so, I am sure about. You're sure about it, guys? That's Emil Dennis. 
I mean, we don't got to show them no more. You know why? No. Take a look behind you. Yes. History repeats itself year after year, win after win. This is the man that gets the wins. Emil, thank you very much. I would like to show something more that I am very proud of. Okay. You this, uh, this can't stop. He's on fire. Uh, yes, but this is last. Last. This you can read also. I received from the KBDB a lifetime achievement award. Yes. Doyman Sport. What is this for? K KBDB mm -hmm. for my performance during my life for the Belgian pigeons. Did they, to did, promote. did they not know you're not done yet? You haven't finished? <laughs> you, you're going to win it all. <laughs> He's going to win it. That's Emil Denny's. Guys, I hope you enjoy the Loft Tour. Remember, you have an opportunity to come to Belgium and meet this man. I suggest you do so. And if you ever have the opportunity to own one of these pigeons, guess what? You need a little bit of that luck. That's Emil. I'm Ryan. Thank you. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We hope you enjoyed that amazing loft tour. Please, reminder to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Until the next loft tour, thanks for flying with me. Bye for now.